Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at writing quadratic functions. And uh, the first way that we're going to look at this is using vertex form. Vertex form is the easiest way for us to uh, uh, write an equation by hand. We simply need the vertex and the a value, and then we just write the stuff down, we plug it in. Okay? So writing quadratic uh, functions, we're going to start with vertex form, and then we'll branch out from there. So writing equations in vertex form, we find the vertex, the a value, we write the equation. And just remember that vertex form here is this guy. It's y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And so a couple quick things to remember here. Remember, uh, this guy right here, the x value for the vertex, it's the opposite of the x value for the vertex that we see here. But then the k value, the y value for the vertex is written exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay? So just remember that minus sign. When we see a minus sign in a formula, it's the opposite of that value. Okay? And then the a value goes out front. For example, if I look at something like this guy, so here, if I'm just given the vertex and the a value, I want to write the equation in vertex form. And so if I want to write this in vertex form, I just use my format and I say, OK, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And I plug in what I know. I say, oh, the a value is in negative 2. And now h, that's the x value for the vertex. Remember, the vertex is hk. But I don't want h. I want the opposite of h. So if h is a 2, I'm going to do a minus 2. And then the k value, instead of a uh, plus uh, 4, it's a minus 4 because the k value is a minus 4. That one stays exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay? And that's it. If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. I want to plug it into this format, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And again, that minus sign acts like an opposite sign, and so I start plugging away here. I say, okay, the a value is a 1 half. x, my hk is right here. h is a negative 3. k is a positive 2. But remember, in the formula, I do the opposite of h, so I'm going to do a plus 3 here. And then the k value, that just stays the way it's supposed to be, so plus 2. And that's it. If I look at the next one, again, uh, this one is in standard form. I want to write it in vertex form. And so once again, if I want to write this thing in vertex form, I need two things. I need the vertex, and I need the a value. And so as I look at this, when we're in standard form, I know how to find the vertex when I'm in standard form. I find the vertex by doing opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of b over 2a. This is going to give me the x value for the vertex, which is my h. And so here, the opposite of b is a 6 over 2 times a, which is a 3. So I get 6 over 6, which is a 1. That's the x value for the vertex. So over here, I'm going to write this off to the side. So that's my h. Now to find the y value, I have to plug that one back in. So I plug it in. And I do some simplifying. 1 squared is a 1. And now I'll do the multiplication. That's 3 minus 6 plus 5. So that gives me a positive 2. Okay, So that's my k value. So now I have my vertex. It's 1, 2. And then this is where students fall apart a little bit. I say, OK, we need the a value. And they start doing crazy things like uh, trying to take that, that opposite of b over 2a and, and figure out what b is. And so, Look at the opposite of b over 2a. You already identified a, right? It was over 2a. You plugged a 3 in for a. That's the a value. Remember, the a value in standard form and the a value in vertex form are literally the same a value. The a value is a 3, okay? Students will try to start solving for a. It's right there. It's a, okay? And now I write it down. Really, y equals a, which is a 3. And then x, I do the opposite of the uh, x value from the vertex, so a minus 1. And then I take that k value exactly the way it's written, plus 2. And that's it. Now switching gears a little bit, let's write things in standard form now. All right? And to write the equations in standard form, typically, again, if we're doing this by hand, it's much easier to find vertex form and then we'll just rewrite it in standard form, OK? And rewriting it in standard form is just a matter of multiplying some stuff out and combining like terms, OK? For example, if I look at this first one, I've got y equals x plus 4 squared minus 6. I want to write the equation in standard form. So all I have to do is multiply this out. So here, x plus, two, x plus 4 squared is x plus 4 times x plus 4. Remember, when you square a binomial, you have to write it twice. You have to multiply this out. You have to distribute here. And so now I distribute the x to each of these. Uh, that gives me an x squared 
uh, plus 4x. I now distribute the 4 to each of these, which gives me a 4x plus 16. The minus 6 just tags along for the ride, and now I combine like terms. y equals x squared plus 8x plus 10, and I am done. Okay. The next one, same kind of thing. Notice it, give, it gives me the vertex and the a value. All right, I could do some uh, strange equations to come up with uh, a to come up with the b value doing the opposite of b over two a. But really, just write the equation in the format that's easy to write it in. Let's write it in vertex form. I write this thing in vertex form. Y equals negative two x minus h. So x and then the opposite of the h value. So minus two. Over here, I just write the negative 4. I take the k value exactly as it is. And now if I want to write this thing in standard form, I'm just going to start multiplying this thing out. So negative 2, this is an x minus 2 times an x minus 2. And me personally, I will always multiply the binomials first, the x minus 2 and the x minus 2. You could distribute the negative 2 to one of those first. I'm going to multiply these first. So I'm going to distribute the x. Uh, let's see, that gives me a an x squared, and a minus 2x. And now I distribute that negative 2. That gives me a minus 2x and a plus 4. And notice I still contained that thing. I still have that negative 2 on the outside. I still have this minus 4 uh, over here. And now it's just combining like terms and continuing to simplify. So here I'm going to combine like terms. That's x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now I'm going to distribute that negative 2. That's a negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 8. And now I continue to combine like terms. So negative 2x squared plus 8x and a minus 12. And that's it. Okay. So again, vertex form is the gateway here. Just like when we wrote linear equations, we typically started with point-slope form. And then from point-slope form, we could rearrange it to slope-intercept. And then from there, we could rearrange it to standard form. We're doing the same thing here. Okay. Uh, vertex form is the gateway. Vertex form is the easiest one to write. And then we can expand out from there. Okay. All right, for this next one, I'm given the vertex and a point that the parabola passes through, all right? And so, again, no matter what format it's asking for, I'm always going to start in vertex form. Again, vertex form is the gateway. I'll start with vertex form, and then I'll move on to standard form from there, okay? And so for this one, it doesn't specify which version we want, so I'm going to write it in vertex form. I'm also going to write it in standard form just to make sure we understand the procedure. And so as I start to think about what I need for vertex form, I need the vertex, and I need the a value. And so I already have the vertex here. It's 3, 2. But now it also, it also asks for the a value. And I'm not directly given the a value for this time. What I have and what I'm given is the vertex, which is hk. So I'll mark that as hk. And then the ordered pair, that's just an x and a y combination. So I'm going to call it x and y. And so as I start to think about vertex form, let me write vertex form down here. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And so as I look at vertex form and I look at what I have labeled so far, h, k, x, and y, that pretty much fills out vertex form, except for the thing I need, which is the a value. And so if I start to plug these in, if I put the 6 here for y, and I put the uh, 7 here for x, and I fill in my h and my k, which is the opposite of h, and then k just as it is, as I start to fill in all these pieces, I find that what I have now is an equation where I can solve for A. And it's the same thing that we did when we were looking at uh, things in, um, in terms of linear equations. I just plug in what I know, and then I can solve for what I don't know. Okay? And so the idea here is I just simplify and solve. And so for this one, 7 minus 3 is a 4. I'm going to continue to simplify. Uh, 4 squared is a 16. And really, I could write it as a times 16, or I could write it as just 16a. And so now I have a very simple equation to solve. So I'm going to solve this one. I'm going to subtract the 2 from each side. Uh, that gives me a 4 equals 16a. I'm then going to divide each side by the 16. And so what I end up with, let me write it over here is that a equals 4 over 16. Let's leave it as a fraction. 4 over 16 reduces to a 1 fourth. 
And so that's my A value. And so if the question asked me just to write the equation and didn't specify, which this one didn't, so if it said just says write the equation, I would say, oh, I could write it in vertex form, or if it asked for vertex form, 1 fourth x minus 3 squared plus 2. Okay, I plug in the A value, the opposite of the H and the K. There's the equation in vertex form. If the problem did ask me to write this thing in standard form, well, I would do all the same stuff that I just did, but now I would rewrite this guy. I would multiply out this x minus 3 squared by doing x minus 3 times x minus 3. And so it's just a, a game of simplification here. Let's see, that's 1 fourth. I'm going to distribute the x. That's an x squared minus 3x. I'm going to distribute the negative 3. That's a negative 3x plus 9. I'm going to just uh, combine like terms here. And now I'll distribute that 1 fourth. And uh, this is going to give me a 6 over 4. I could reduce in the next uh, step here. This is going to give me a 9 over 4. And then plus 2, I might as well go ahead and get common denominators. That's 4, uh, sorry, 8 over 4. And now I can combine like terms. This is a 1 fourth x squared. Let me reduce this guy, minus 3 halves x. And then right here, plus 17 fourths. And that's it. And yeah, it's a little ugly because of the fraction in there, all right? This one would be much more useful uh, in vertex form, okay? And so if I was asking for the equation here and it didn't specify, this is by far the better format for this particular example, okay? If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. I've got the vertex and a point. I need the vertex and the A value. So I have the vertex... And again, when I think about that vertex, this is an H and a K. This guy over here is an X and a Y. And so if I think about vertex form, Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K, I just plug in what I know. I've got a Y value of negative 10. I've got an A value that I don't know. I've got an X value of negative 6. I've got the opposite of H to be a plus 4. And I've got the K as a minus 2. And now I simplify. I simplify and solve for a. Let's see, that's a negative 2 squared minus 2. A negative 2 squared is a positive 4, so just be really careful with your signs there. Uh, the parentheses that we use become really important here. And I'm going to add that 2 to each side. And divide by the 4. And so once again, I have my A value. It's a negative 2. So vertex form, I can just write it. I can say, oh, negative 2, x plus 4, squared minus 2. I plug away, all right? If I wanted this thing in standard form, let me take that off to the side over here. I would have to multiply out the x plus 4. Same couple steps. So here, that's an x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. I'm using my distributive property there, or FOIL if you like that. And I'll combine like terms. This one's a much nicer one to put in standard form. Distribute. And now combine more like terms. So again, we start with the vertex form. If we don't have the A value, we find the A value. Find the vertex, find the A value, write in vertex form, and then we can go to standard form from there. All right, and these examples, we're actually going to go right to standard form. All right, so this is a uh, slight departure from what we've been doing. So typically, we want to start with vertex form. That's when we're doing it by hand. These, we're going to use calculators and computer programs to do this, okay? But when we're doing it by hand, it's always find the vertex, find the A value, write it in vertex form. And then if we want standard form from there, it's a matter of multiplying and combining like terms, okay? The only time when we're going to go right to standard form is if we're going to use a calculator or a computer to do this, 
And uh, the scenario in which we would do that is if we have three or more ordered pairs from the parabola, but none of them is necessarily the vertex, or we don't know if one of them is the vertex, okay? And so we're going to do this uh, through the use of quadratic regressions. So we're going to do this with quadratic regressions. When we do a quadratic regression, it's going to give us the A, the B, and the C value. All right, And uh, that term quadratic regression should sound familiar. We've done linear regressions in the past. And remember, linear regressions we used with scatter plots to find uh, like lines of best fit. Quadratic regressions are used for the same thing, and we will use a quadratic regression to get an estimated parabola. But the fact of the matter is that regardless of what kind of regression you're doing, if you have ordered pairs that are from an exact function and you do a, a regression of some kind, it's going to find that exact function. When you think about the, the nature of what a regression is, it's trying to come up with a function that matches the, the ordered pairs, that matches the xy values as closely as possible. All right. So when we have data values that are kind of randomized, well, yeah, of course it's going to be an estimated line of best fit. It's going to be as close as possible, but it's not going to touch all of them. All right. But if we have exact values, well, of course it's going to give us the exact equation because that's what it's programmed to do. Okay. The regression is trying to get the function that matches the data best. So if the data is an actual uh, exact graph, well, then the uh, regression is going to give us an exact equation. Okay? And that's what we're going to use to our advantage. And keep in mind, that's true for linear uh, functions as well. So if you have two ordered pairs for a line, you could do a, uh, a linear regression, and it would give you the exact equation of the line. All right. So here, here's three ordered pairs uh, from a parabola, and it's an exact function. So when I do the quadratic regression, it's going to give me the exact equation of that function. All right, so we're going to do this on Desmos here. And so let me hop over to Desmos. I'm just going to punch these three ordered pairs, 0, 0, the negative 1, negative 2, and the 1, 6, into the Desmos uh, um, universe, and then have it do a quadratic regression to, to find A, B, and C for me. All right, so let me jump over here. Once we're over in Desmos, to get our table of values, we're going to hit that little plus sign, and then the uh, table. And now we're just going to punch in ordered pairs uh, into this table. And so, like, the x values are 0, uh, negative 1, and uh, 1. And then if I kind of match up the y values to create the ordered pairs, it's 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and uh, 1, 6. Okay? And so I've just converted my three ordered pairs. I've put them into a table, into an x, y chart. And I can see them graphed over here. All right? So I see the, the three ordered pairs graphed over on this side. Now I'm going to go down to the next selection. And if you remember for linear regressions, we just typed in y equals mx plus b, except instead of x and y, we used x1 and y1 because the table uses x1 and y1. And that's the indication to Desmos to use the values from the table. All right. So that's how we did a linear regression. A quadratic regression, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do y equals uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, but instead of y and x, I'm going to use y1 and x1 for those to make sure it uses the, ta the values from the table. The other thing is instead of an equal sign, we use a tilde symbol for this one. It's that kind of approximation. So I'm going to do y1, and if you just type y and then the 1, it'll automatically do it as a little subscript. And then the tilde symbol, which is that little uh, single uh, squiggly line. And then we're going to do a x1, make sure you do x1, but now I have to square this, and there's two ways to do that. You can use the shift and then 6, which gives you that little caret symbol, and then hit the 2, it'll automatically do as an exponent. Or down here at the bottom of the screen, you see this little keyboard-looking thing. If you hit that, it brings up your, your math tools, so here's the, that a squared, that means to square whatever you have. So there's ax squared, and then plus bx, but it's x1, all right, and then plus c, all right? And so what happens here is we can see, let me move the, let me hide the keyboard, but we can see this parabola looks really good and it looks like it goes through uh, all the points that I had listed here. And it turns out the negative one, negative two was actually my vertex for this one, but I had no way of knowing that, okay? And so I can see that this guy, the only one that doesn't look like it goes through exactly is this one up here, uh, the one six. It looks like it's a little off and here's why. It's not because this is an exact parabola. It's because sometimes when calculators and computer programs do this, there's a little bit of error involved as they try to narrow this down. And so if we look over here, look at the A, the B, and the C value. 
all right? Notice the A value is a 2, the B value is a 4, and then the C value says 9.86 something, and then times 10 to the negative 32nd power. See, that's scientific notation. Let me jump back over to the notes and write these down. And so if I kind of think about this for a moment, and you'll see right away what the, what the error for the calculator was, but let's see, A was a, uh, a 2, B was a 4, and then C, the C value that it gave us, let me write this off to the side, was 9.86 times 10 to the negative 32nd power, okay? And when you think about that, and calculators do this all the time, we have to watch out for scientific notation. It usually means there's a little bit of error. Well, that means if I wrote this in standard form, that would be 0. 0.00000. I'd have 31 zeros followed by a 98. And you see what value I'm really close to? If I have 31 zeros and then the 98, I'm really, really close to zero. If I rounded this off, the C value would actually be a zero. And that's what the exact C value is supposed to be. But again, the calculator, just the, the computer Desmos this time, had a little bit of error involved as it went to do this, okay? And that's okay. It's all right that there was a little bit of error involved. We just have to know to kind of round that off. And if I jumped back to Desmos, if I were to punch in the exact equation of y equals, uh, let's see, 2x uh, squared plus 4x and did just a c value of 0, now look at this. Now we can see on this line, we, we should get that exact point if I delete this guy. Okay, Now, now we should get the exact point. There it is, 1, 6. Okay? And so now we can see that, yeah, it was exact, but the, the computer program just had a little bit of error involved. Okay, So make sure you, you understand that. Computers do that sometimes. So let me write the equation. I already did on Desmos. Let's see, 2x squared plus 4x plus 0. Of course, I don't need to write the 0 because when I add 0, it doesn't change anything. So I'm going to leave it like this. That is a terrible looking two. I'm ashamed. I can do better. I believe in me. Sweet. Okay? And that's it. If I look at the next one, it's given me uh, three new ordered pairs, 1, 4, negative 1, 6, and 2, 9. So I'm going to head back over to Desmos and punch this in. And so here, I'm going to delete everything that I have, even the table, just to remind us of where to find this thing. So I go to the plus sign up here. And I hit table. Okay, that's where we find that. We got to hit the little plus sign. So let's see, I've got one. Uh, it was one, four, negative one, six. Whoops. Negative one, six, and two, nine. Okay, so there's my three ordered pairs. Uh, I can't see all of them right at the moment uh, unless I scroll around a little bit. And so as I look at this thing, these don't look like much like a, a parabola at all. But if it's telling us to write the equation of a parabola through these uh, points, well, I just have to kind of trust it, and I'm going to punch these in. So here we go. y1 tilde ax1 uh, squared plus bx. And as I punch in more and more values... Uh, don't forget the x of 1. See, I'm getting really close, and then plus c. And so as I look at this thing, now we can see the parabola that goes through those exact points, okay? I can see it graphed. I can see it hitting all of those points. And look, it even identifies the vertex for me. And this one wouldn't be very pretty in vertex form because of those decimals, okay? But I can see, look at the a, a b, and c. a is 2, b is negative 1, and c is 3, all right? So it spits out this answer for me. I'm going to go back uh, to the notes here and write it down. So let's see, A was a 2, B was a negative 1, and C was a 3. And so now I can write my equation. Y equals AX squared uh, plus BX plus C. And I could make that an invisible one. If you leave it as a, a negative 1 in there, that's fine. If you want to write it as just a minus X, that's also fine. Either one of these would be A-OK. -okay. All right? So we let the calculator do the work for us. And then if I look at this one, this is kind of what we're used to with regressions. Uh, this one, we're going to get an estimated. So the, the values are not going to be nice A, B, and C values like they were in the previous couple. Uh, these are going to be a little bit uglier, uh, and that's okay. We're going to have some decimals. The first thing we have to do, though, with, with time 
is let's rewrite this in kind of military time. 10, 12, those are all the same, but this one would be 14, 16, and 18. And then this guy would actually be a 24. And if we went beyond that time, we'd kind of have to go beyond military time. We'd have to do like 26, 28, okay? Because we can't have that be uh, um, cyclical. In, in other words, uh, round back around to the same value, all right? And so now we're going to punch this in. Keep in mind, when we punch it in, we're going to exclude the 24 because I don't have a value there. I'm actually going to predict that value when I'm done, okay? So let me jump over to Desmos and punch this in. Once again, let me delete these. Plus sign, table, okay? And now I punch in these values. So I've got, let's see, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. And then the Y values what went with them. That was a 52. And so as I get to the last one, I notice I don't see anything on my graph, okay? There is nothing over here. And that's because look at the X values. The X values go from 8 to 18, and I'm looking at X values from 0 to 12. Look at the Y values. They go from 52 all the way up to 81, and I'm looking at Y values from 0 uh, to 10 here, you know? And so the, what, the first thing I could do is I could scroll all the way up and try to find these. It might not look great. See, as I, I get to 52, I can see that point. All right, they're really spread out, so it's kind of hard to see. I could zoom in and out, um, but it doesn't give me a real great representation when I do uh, too much zooming. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to this, uh, this little wrench that's in the corner, and I'm just going to set it up myself. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? For the x's, I'm going to go from negative 5, and then the biggest x value I had, uh, if I include the prediction that I'm trying to do, is 24. So I'll go 24. And then the y values... I'm going to narrow it down. I'm going to say, you know what, let's go from 40 uh, to something like 90, okay? Uh, just to make sure I get them all. And what happens is I get a much better representation of this thing. I can see the curvature of this. And the reason I want to look at the scatter plot first is if this doesn't look like a quadratic, I certainly don't want to do a quadratic regression, okay? If it looks like a line, I do a linear regression, all right? And as we learn more and more functions, that's what scatter plots are for. We look at the scatter plot and say, what function does this look like? That tells us what kind of regression to do. So this one does look like a parabola, all right? So I'm going to do a quadratic regression. So I'm going to go right to that. Let's see. Y1 tilde, whoops, I missed, uh, A, X1, and then squared. You can go into the little uh, keyboard menu, uh, plus BX1, plus C. Okay. And so it gives me the estimate. And notice it doesn't touch all of them. That's because this was data this time. It wasn't exact values from a uh, quadratic. It was an estimate that we're trying to find. And look at the A, B, and C values. They're not real pretty. They're not great. Okay. Negative uh, uh, 0.47, uh, 14.72, and a negative 36.12. Okay. And so if I head back over here, let's draw a quick sketch of the scatter plot uh, just to, so we have it. But the scatter plot kind of looked like this. They, they kind of leveled off. I had a value here, and then this one was a kind of a bigger drop. All right? But that's kind of what the scatter plot looked like. So I could tell it looked like a quadratic. And then I found my A, B, and my C values. Let's see, A was a negative 0.47. B was a 14.72. And C was a negative 36.12. Okay? And so when I write this thing, let's write the quadratic. That's Y equals... Uh, a, x squared, plus b, x, plus c. Okay, just fit it in there. And then the last thing I want to do here is it asks me to make a prediction using that 24. Just grab any calculator. Uh, here's my, my uh, Casio graphing calculator. When you punch this in, just punch it in in terms of... Uh, uh, use parentheses where you plug these in. So the 24 in parentheses squared. Okay? So any place I had an X, I just replace it with parentheses, and I plug that in. And your calculator will do a much better job if you do that, if you always use parentheses to plug things in. So I get a 46.44, which makes sense because we're talking about temperature. The temperature rises pretty rapidly as the sun comes up, then it levels out around the afternoon when we hit the high, and then it drops down pretty drastically after the sun goes down. All right? And so that's why this doesn't follow a linear uh, uh, regression. It's more quadratic.
And so again, writing equations to quadratics, and when we're doing them by hand, vertex form, vertex form, vertex form. Find the vertex, find the A value, plug it into vertex form. If you want standard form, well, rearrange vertex form, multiply it out, combine like terms. Okay? If we're given three ordered pairs and we, uh, or, or more, and we uh, don't know which one is the vertex, that's when we're going to go to the graphing calculator. That's where we're going to punch these in um, and let uh, Desmos or graphing calculator come up with the A, the B, and the C so I can write my equation. Okay?